person who's arrested is the offender does not do very much time. I know. They go right out. Simply because of safety. They have to move and get out of his way. If he knows where they are and he's that brutal and he will walk, then he'll come for that. This way to take them out of there, put them someplace safe, and uh, hopefully he can't find them. And they can change their lives. If we leave them where they are, uh, he's going to be not out move in him? a month, he's going to be out in a year. That's right. Why, why not move him? him? Move him to another state. The overall answer is amending case law. I have been fighting for almost two decades. And the district attorney's office is sitting to that hearing me. It's actually for families. Everyone's sitting until we can amend case law, we are not going to get anywhere from mm -hmm. this issue. And in my personal experience and trying to help others and, and burying two people to this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She's got her hand up. Oh, sorry. It's not really a question. It's what I've learned through the years from working with people many years ago. You must teach also the one who's being abused to learn not to open the door, to say, you know, like you have a person of abuse who always says, oh, I promise never to hurt you again. I will never hit you again. I will never hurt you. I will never ever do it. But that abuser will always do it because always do it. It will never stop. In my experience, I saved a lady's life once. She kept opening up the door until one day she got attacked and she realized that every time she opened that door, he was going to attack her and hurt her. And I got her out to safety. Uh, let's ask questions, though. Thank you. I have a question for you. Um, you I, I heard you say that you look at the cases that um, people file for order of protection. What in certain cases that there are a lot of women that don't go and file an order of protection against their husband? Do you still handle something like that? Where I mean, how do you? Can we come to you? I work for the assembly office, so I've had a case where um, it was domestic violence, but she never called the cops because she was afraid to. So she came to our office for help because the assemblyman was of the same nationality. So at that point, what do you, you know, can I, can we well, refer them to you? She doesn't want to call, she can definitely walk in, and you know, she can tell the front police officer at the reception area, you know, I want to speak with someone regarding domestic violence, and she can be sent to them, sent to us, and we can speak with them. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be a police report. That's what I want to yeah, know. Does yeah. it always have to be a police report, or can it go directly to you? I should say harder is the fact that we need to support the client with other, whatever decision that it is they make. Great. If they want to stay, we have to help them with that. If they want to leave, we have to help them with that. So it's not. with our policies that we can't tell them what to do. We can't, can't tell them we need to leave. You know, we need to just help them in whatever so way. Just kind of walk them through to help them take them. So it's another form of help. Rather than if they don't go directly to the police department, yeah. they can come directly to you. That's what I needed to know. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Um, so you, um, I didn't get to many of the things that you said. So you're working to save the rights of the people. No, we can't hear you. Excuse me. When we. What kind of assistance do you provide victims of criminal? What, what, what kind of assistance do you provide for victims of criminal of domestic violence? You know, in terms of beyond the location, So we have, besides, you know, giving them information about shelters, we have this called the lock change. So if the perp has the keys and she doesn't want to come in, she we go and change the locks on free. If she doesn't want to leave, she wants to stay there, and we have this protocol of transition shelter in which we put devices in their homes and they can like present and then they're led to the four night precinct and the cops are on their way. And they're given a pen and they're going to So they're in the streets and they see the perp, and they can just be it, and the location is sent out and the police come. Thank you very much.
I'm sorry. Yeah. That's, that's so wait, guys, no, no, no. Um, now we have the police domestic violence, and uh, they're going to take a couple of years. Uh, so what they do and their role they play in this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.